Hi there mga classmates and Sir Javier. Uh, welcome to this video. Uh, today we are going to embark on a fascinating journey through the history and evolution of computer. So yes, there we go. This will be fast paced and very quick, a short video. Uh, so yes, so stay put and yeah, enjoy the video and hope you learn something. The journey begins in ancient times around 2700 BC with the abacus. It was used by the ancient civilizations like the Chinese. This mechanical counting tool was the world's first computing device designed for simple arithmetic operations. Then fast forward to 100 BC and we stumble upon the Antikythera mechanism. This one right here. An, an astonishing Greek analog computer. This marvel of early engineering was used for complex astronomical calculations proving that ancient minds were far more tech-savvy than we might think. Then in 1630, we have the Humble Slide Rule, a computational marvel based on John Napier's logarithmic rules. It served as a trusted companion for mathematicians and engineers for centuries, remaining in use until the 1970s. In 1964, the brilliant Blaise Pascal introduced as the Pascaline. An early me mechanical calculator, this remarkable device could handle basic arithmetic operations like addition and subtraction, making it the fifth bit of the 17th century. And fast forward to 1804, we meet Jacquard Loom, courtesy of Mr. Joseph Marie Jacquard. This ingenious invention laid the foundation for automated machinery and even early forms of computer pro programming. And now in 1833, Charles Baggage enters the scene with his brainchild, the Difference Machine. Here, here you can see right here. Although it was never fully completed, this mechanical marvel set the stage for modern computers and sparked imaginations like the latest tech gadgets we have right now. However, Mr. Baggage was not satisfied with just one, one groundbreaking invention. In 1843, he unveiled the analytical engine right here you can see right here considered the world's first programmable computer it introduced the concept of a store and a mail and and was programmed using punch cards there we go fast forward to 1887 and we're introduced to herman hollerit's tabulating machine or hollerit machine it was named after mr herman uh, this ingenious punch card device was used for the U.S. Census dramatically speeding up data processing and setting the stage for the computer revolution. Uh, right now, we, we can start with the generations of, you know, the evolutions of the computer. Uh, the first generation, the vacuum tube computers, the, the 1930s to 1950s marked the first generation of electronic computers powered by vacuum tubes. The ENIAC or Electronic Numerical Integrator and Computer was a prime example used for scientific calculations and the birth of modern programming or computing. Then fast forward to 1951 to 1952, we meet the UNIVAC or the Universal Automatic Computer. It contained thousands of vacuum tube punch cards for data input and output and played a pivotal role in the early computer era. And here enters Miss Grace Hopper, the programming genius behind the UNIVAC, and the first recipient of the Computer Science Man of the Award, Man of the Year Award. Sorry about that. She's also known for a legendary incident where she found a mod stuck in a relay switch, coining the term debugging, that we you know still use today. In the 1950s, 19 to 1960s, the second generation of computers emerged with the advent of transistors. This tiny powerful devices right here made computers smaller, cheaper, and faster. Examples include the IBM 1401 and IBM 7090. By the way, I just want to let you know that the transistors, the building blocks of this new era were developed by John Bardeen, Walter Brathain, William Shockley at the Bell Labs on December 23, 1947. This semiconductor wonders controlled currents, amplified signals, and switch and, and electronic data. Then we go to in the 1960s, we welcome the third generation of computers, powered by integrated circuits of microchips. In Intel's introduction of the first microchip, the Intel 
1971 marked a groundbreaking leap in computing technology. The 1970s saw the advent of fourth generation computers, thanks to the microprocessor or CPU. See right here. Alongside integrated circuits, these tiny chips revolutionized computing, making it possible for computers to easily fit on a desk and paving the way for the era of the laptop. You know, the mobile, the computer notebook, the laptop notebook, like that. Okay, so in the 1970s and the 1980s brought the personal computers into our homes and offices. Iconic machines like the Apple II or the Apple, yeah, there, uh, yeah, that's correct, Apple II, and the IBM PC. Equipped with graphical user interfaces like Windows, transforming computing into a daily part of our lives. In the 1980s and beyond, laptops and mobile devices took center stage, adding mobility to computing. The arrival of smartphones and tablets brought faster, more widespread internet connectivity, turning us all into tech-savvy enjoyers or most likely undead or zombies. And then fast forward to the 1990s and the internet took, internet took center stage, connecting people worldwide. The World Wide Web brought, by, brought to life by the genius of Tim Berners-Lee revolutionize how we access information and interact online. It was like the opening the door to a vast digital adventure. You know, a adventure to the digital universe like that. Then we go as we enter the 2000s era, cloud computing emerged as a game changer. This technology enabled us to access computing re resources and data over the internet resulting in faster data processing and storage. It's like having the power of a supercomputer at your fingertips. Then, and last but not least, you know, finally here in the 21st century, we stand on the brink of the fifth generation of computing, the artificial intelligence or AI, and the quantum computing are revolu uh, revolutionizing how we approach complex problems. This two right here. This technology is promised to unlock new realms of advanced compute computations and problem solving, akin to science fiction coming to life before our eyes. And there you have it, guys. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, thank you, classmates. Uh, thank you, Sir Jaber. Uh, this was a incredible journey to you know to the history of computer and the evolution as well. Uh, okay, and that's it. That's a wrap. Until next time, stay curious, stay, stay tech savvy, and keep exploring the world of technology. Bye-bye.